Let's talk about the three different ways to get your geometry directly into D5 render. So let's start with the direct import method. That's this guy right over here. And let me show you the model. As you can see, I've got all different layer colors that are coming through the viewport, and I haven't assigned any materials. This is important in just one second. So I go over here to D5, I hit direct import, and I'm gonna be able to import FBX, D5A, SketchUp, Rhino models, and ABC files. So once I select the file I want, it's gonna be right here in my imported container, and I can drag out and I'll get the file. So as you can see, all the colors look about the same, right? So let me shrink this. Everything's come through, right? I've got the green, I've got the red, I've got the glass. Here's another comparison. Looks perfect, right? So that's the direct import. It's actually my favorite way to get geometry into here, just because I typically work with geometry freezes, basically meaning the model's brought to a certain point, it's ready to go. I'm not really designing. It comes through beautifully. The second import method is live sync. And right under workflow, you're gonna see all the different plugins. So that's where you can get the live sync plugins. So what that looks like is this guy right here. From here, you can actually connect it directly to D5 and it'll actually sync whatever you're doing in your source app with D5. So if I click this to connect, it's gonna build the bridge between Rhino and D5. This is the same exact plugin for SketchUp. Like if you don't believe me, I have a SketchUp file right here. It's the same thing. You can sync it, you can send over your, your cameras, your lights and everything, uh, and you can also export geometry. It's the same exact thing. As you can see, it's running in the background. It's gonna open up D5 for us. And the reason you would use the live sync plugin over the other direct import method is if you like designing and rendering at the same time, because essentially you could have Rhino on one side of your screen and D5 on the other. And as you edit, you'll see your changes in real time instead of having to manually reload in D5. So now that it's been sent over, you'll see under object, I've got this little sync button. That's telling me that this is synced. But you'll notice there's something weird about my model here. If I press down I for my eyedropper tool, and I click on any of these, you see how it says default material. And if I look at my Rhino model, you see how I have all these different colors. So if I were to just move around, notice how D5 is also following my movements in Rhino. But now if I were to model something, let's say I grab a box here and I just start drawing here, it's gonna appear here. So that's the benefit of the life sync. But to my point earlier about the materials, why is this all white? So the difference between the direct import workflow and life sync is how the back end is actually handled, which is gonna cause a little bit of issues if you're not familiar with what's going on. So with the direct import method, the first method we tried, it combines the layer color and the layer name to generate a unique material channel. Remember when everything was like red? So just as a comparison, this is the direct import. So you see how everything's red and colored and matches the Rhino model, but here everything's white. So the reason behind it being white is because I actually don't have any materials assigned here. That's one of the reasons why I like the direct import method a little bit more because it's simpler because I might not actually have materials. If I were to go here and create a material, let me make this just blue, hit okay. This is now going to inherit that because I have that material now. That's the big difference. So you have to think about your workflow. Like what's more important, having the live sync connection like this or being able to just avoid assigning materials in general. So that's my biggest you know, concern with the live sync workflow. I might not have the materials just because it's so early in the project. I typically have the layer color though. So that's the big difference here. So I'm not saying this is bad or anything. It's just, you need to know that if you're going this way, you need to commit to it. And the other issue is you can't actually switch between the workflows. So if you have a direct import and you want to switch to live sync, it doesn't work like that. It's actually going to undo all of your work because it doesn't support the materials in the same way. So just be aware of that. Then the last method is the export method. So right under here, if I click this, I have a bunch of different export methods. I can actually export via object selection, layer selection, or layer structure. So watch this, I'm gonna set it to two layers. And what's cool about this workflow is it'll create a D5A file, and hit save. And what I can do is actually import that. So if you remember earlier on, I said there's a bunch of different files that you can import like FBX, D5A, and SketchUp. D5A is their own custom format. If I hit open, now you'll see I have my D5A alongside with my Rhino file. I place this in here. It looks just like the live sync, right? It's gonna handle the materials the same as live sync. The biggest difference now is when I go to my object container, notice 
everything is one giant group. So the interesting thing with this is now I can actually take apart the model just to make this a little bit simpler. Let me ungroup this a couple times just so you can see everything. See how everything's a different piece. Look at that. I can actually take this apart in the other methods, right? Everything is one asset. So this is one model, right? So if I scroll all the way up here, see how that's just one. This is another model, right? It's got no sub hierarchy. And then these are all separate pieces. So why would you do this? The best way I could think of it is if you are dealing a lot with proxy geometry, let's say you've got like boxes representing trees, you can actually select any of those assets. So let me grab this column, for example, and go over to this guy. Let's pretend like the column represents a tree, right? I can go over here and hit confirm and let me find tree. Let's say it's this guy. It will then swap out that column for the tree. So that's pretty handy. So if you have one layer that's just dedicated to these proxies, you can export that out under those export settings that we were talking about over here, right? You can export out just layers or objects. So here I did everything, you know, just to show you, but that's how you could use that as a really powerful way to just generate a bunch of, um, bunch of trees. Like if I were to grab multiple columns, let's say all of these, it's going to replace all of them. So that's how you would use that um, as a workflow. So I think all of these are like valid, but there's definitely some pros and cons. So again, my personal preference is the direct import. I find that it's, you know, kind of the simplest, um, just because I'm like used to working in this way where I have my layers represent a material and I don't have an actual material assigned to them. I think this way is really good if you're designing and rendering at the same time. So like you could literally, you know, move your camera around, model things and up here. And I think the last workflow is good if you're dealing with like a lot of proxies or you want to make like an exploded axon diagram, this could be really useful, but I can't stress enough how important it is to actually understand what's going on on the material backend because you could erase your work by simply like replacing from local with the incorrect file. Um, like if I were to just show you that, let me grab this guy and then replace from local with my D5A file. It's going to break all my materials and then it's going to become blue. So it's loading. So you see that? So basically undid my work. Let's pretend like I, I placed assets. So that's why I'm saying it's important to understand the back end because it could completely destroy what you've been working on. I hope this video made sense and help explain the three different types. I think all of them are super important with you know our workflow. Drop a like, comment if you have a question, and subscribe. Helps the channel out.